Hello everyone and welcome to another skill cap guide. In this guide, you will learn 25 tips and tricks to help bring your game to the next level. This information has been curated by the top Valorant players and coaches who have spent countless hours of research to give you the most effective and up-to-date tips that you won't find anywhere else. Remember to click the sub button and the bell icon to keep up to date with the most high quality Valorant guides that you will find. Most of these tips are geared towards beginners, but I bet that there will be a couple of tips that even you high level players don't know. To start, let's go over a very basic tip that many players don't know. You see this gray circle on your minimap? This is the distance that your footsteps can be heard by other players. In Valorant, you are very loud while running. Remember to walk whenever you don't want your enemies to know where you are. So many times I see players run and hide behind a wall only to get sprayed down by an enemy that heard them. And this leads me straight into my next tip, which is learning which walls are able to be shot through and which are not. Every time you shoot a wall, an effect takes place. Paying attention to this effect will let you know whether your bullets are going through the wall or not. Here we see when we shoot this wall, the bullets leave an orange spark and a spider web crack pattern on the wall. This indicates that your bullets are not going through the wall. On the other hand, when we shoot this wall, we see a puff of smoke and a black hole is left on the wall. This means your bullets are going through the wall and hitting whatever is on the other side. Now anytime you're trying to get that cheeky wallbang kill, be sure your bullets are actually going through. For our third tip, we are going to be going over some important economy information that many of you don't know. For instance, did you know when you go into your buy menu, you can actually see how many minimum credits you will have next round? You can use this information to know whether you should full buy or even save. Remember, you need 3,900 credits to buy a rifle and heavy armor. Not only will you know how many credits you will have next round, you can also check your scoreboard to see how many credits the enemy team is starting with. Knowing how many credits the enemy team has at the start of the round is very useful because you can predict how they will play. If the other team has less than 3,000 credits, you can expect them to save and maybe play some close corners. Use this to try and predict and react to how you think they will be playing. Another thing to pay attention to while playing is who is actually playing at each bomb site. This is tip number four. When attacking, memorize what positions the enemy is playing. That way, when you get a pick, you'll know which bomb site is empty. At the same time, if you spot an enemy at a bomb site he doesn't usually play, this can mean the other team is stacking that bomb site, and the other area of the map that the enemy usually plays is empty and easily taken. Always try to keep these things in mind while on attack side so that you can exploit the defending team's weaknesses. Now, let's talk about tip number 5, which is knowing when to spray and when to burst your weapon. The further you move away from your target, the harder it gets to effectively spray and kill the target. As you get further from your enemies, you want to shoot less bullets. On the other hand, when you're very close to the target, you want to hold down left mouse button and try and control your spray. This will secure you the kill faster than if you were to try and burst fire this target down. For tip number 6, we are going to talk about sound. In Valorant, sound is almost as important as sight. You can find enemy positions, gain useful intel, and even get free kills off of it. Normal abilities don't make sound when pulled out, but they do make sound when used. Each ability has a different distance at which it can be heard as well. For instance, a brimstone smoke is heard much further away than a phoenix molly. One thing to keep in mind is that ultimate abilities on the other hand make the audio cue as soon as you press the ultimate button. Now on to tip number 7, which is going to help you get more kills by making sure you stay alive longer. Let's talk about when to use abilities. Most abilities in Valorant are used as utility to help obscure vision or help you move to an unexpected area. Using these abilities while out in the open is extremely dangerous and will get you killed. Instead, try to get behind cover while using abilities. The same goes for reloading. Many new players will reload after shooting only a couple of bullets. This puts you in a vulnerable position and you should instead wait until you have a safe area that you can hide and reload at. And our next couple of tips are going to be some small things that you can do to take your gameplay to the next level. For instance, tip number 8, drop the spike behind you. While you're attacking, your main objective is to get the bomb down and defend it until it explodes. So, as a defender, as soon as you see bomb, you rotate over to it. We want to try and prevent the defending team from gaining this information by dropping the spike in a safe area that the enemies won't see to ensure that they don't get this crucial info. This can be as simple as dropping it behind you in hookah on bind before you push and then going back to grab it afterwards so that the other team has to still be cautious about where the spike actually is. Moving on to tip number 9, let's talk more about our abilities, specifically our ultimate abilities. 
In Valorant, you get your ultimate ability after gaining 6 or 7 ultimate points depending on your agent. You can get these points by getting kills, defusing and planting the spike, dying, and even collecting the ultimate orbs that spawn around the map. You can use your scoreboard to check and see how many ultimate points you and the other team have. The other team's ultimate status is also shown at the top of your screen. A yellow highlight means they have their ultimate charged, and a green highlight indicates that their ultimate is in use. Another way to help increase your kill count though is with tip number 10, and that's positioning your crosshair at head level. Keeping your crosshair at head level is probably one of the most important things to learn as a beginner. Consciously remembering to keep your crosshair up at head level will gather you many many more free kills. And coming in at tip number 11, we have how to stay alive while peaking angles. One of the most common mistakes players make is over peaking or wide swinging. Get in the habit of peaking one angle at a time as you turn a corner instead of overexposing yourself to multiple angles through wide swinging. This will allow you to isolate your fights to 1v1s rather than having to deal with multiple enemies at a time. Now tip number 12 is going to revolve around the settings menu rather than your gameplay. There are a ton of settings in Valorant that can impact your gameplay a lot. Let's start by talking about sensitivity. If you come from a different popular FPS game and you want to use that sensitivity, here's a chart that shows the conversions from many other popular games. If you're a new player trying to find the best sensitivity for you, there's one simple rule to follow. This is the 180 rule. Start by putting your mouse on the furthest left side of your mouse pad, then drag your mouse all the way to the right side. You should do about a 180 degree turn. This is just a baseline, so definitely do some tweaking and find something that feels right to you. Another setting that is important is your enemy highlight color. You can choose to have your enemy highlight color on red, purple, or yellow. Obviously, if you are colorblind to one of these colors, pick something different, but try to experiment with different colors to see which you prefer. You are already one step ahead of the other players by watching this video as well. If you want to keep improving, hit that subscribe button and bell icon to keep up with all of the most premium skill cap guides. Now, moving on, let's talk about tip number 13, which is to get extremely proficient with one agent. Right now in Valorant, you have the option of 10 agents you can choose. Instead of randomly picking different agents, you should instead try to find one that you enjoy playing and try to get really good with this agent. Let's say for instance you decide to get really good at Sova. Well, instead of just playing Sova constantly, also spend time to learn different arrow lineups and research how some of the top Sovas are playing. For tip number 14, let's talk about how rotates can affect your gameplay. Let's say you're on attack. Many times players will get a pick on one site and instantly decide they have to execute on it. Just because you got a pick on one site doesn't always mean you have to hard execute on it. If you're too slow to take advantage of the pick, the enemy will often rotate players to defend the area that you just got a pick at. Consider using this pick as a fake. The enemy will think you're pushing the site that you got a pick at and over rotate players to defend it. Instead, rotate to the other side of the map where it's likely empty. At the same time, just because you're on defense and playing A site, doesn't mean you play there the whole time. If three or more enemies are spotted somewhere else, and especially if the spike is spotted, it's okay to preemptively rotate. This choice is to rotate is often dictated by how the enemy team is playing. If every time they're spotted somewhere they commit to pushing that site, then rotate faster on defense. But if every time you get a pick on attack, the enemy team instantly rotates their whole team to defend the site, rotate to the opposite site and take the empty one over there. Now that tip on taking sites is very useful, but it's not as useful if you don't know tip number 15, which is one of the biggest mistakes that new players make. So many times I see new players give enemies 1v1s over and over again when they could instead trade the kill. When a teammate is peeking a corner, be ready to peek as soon as they get into a gunfight so that you can trade kills. This may look like you're baiting teammates, but it's actually a core fundamental in tactical FPS games. And moving on to tip number 16, we have taking your time especially when attacking. Many players commit to a fast execute on a bomb site with their teammates as if they're a professional 5-man team. It's okay to spread out and look for picks. This is referred to as playing default. Once you get a pick, this weakens the enemy's defense and forces them to start rotating players to fill in the gap, creating opportunities for you to execute. A lot of times this is much more effective than trying to run an advanced execute on a bomb site. We talked about tip number 17 earlier, but let's go more in depth. I'm going to explain how you can use sound to your advantage and why this is so important. To start, I think it goes without saying you need to make sure your volume is loud enough to hear enemy footsteps as well as everything else that is happening. After you make sure you can hear everything correctly, you need to pay attention to what different sounds sound like. An especially important part of this is the direction that footsteps are coming from. 
Moving on, many players explained to me that they understand the game but can't seem to improve their aim to help secure the kills that they so desperately need. This is why tip number 18 revolves around aim training. Valorant gives us a free aim trainer built into the game, which is very useful. While in your main menu, go here, then click practice. This will bring you to the training ground. There are many options you can do while in this training ground, but I will give you the most useful for training your aim. The first test that I would do to warm up and practice is right here in the shooting range. Click F3 to check the settings and set the bots to easy. Try to kill as many bots as you can while in this mode. A 30 is considered a perfect score. This warm up or training routine will help you more and more with reaction time and flicks, whereas the next routine will help more with raw aim. The next training you can do is simply called practice. You can activate this by shooting the square here on the board. This will spawn a ton of bots that will auto respawn. Spend 5-10 to 10 minutes focusing on hitting headshots on these bots. As new ones spawn, go ahead and take them out as quickly as you can. This is my personal favorite way to warm up and practice as it is also the most versatile. Tip number 19 is the key to winning your Valorant games, and this is communication. Communicating with your team is absolutely essential to being a good player and to winning more games. You want to make sure your teammates have all of the information that you have. This will help everyone understand exactly what is going on throughout the game while still focused on getting kills. If your entire team implements this and communicates, you will know everything that is going on on the entire map. Hopefully you understand why this could be so, so useful. Along with the topic of communication, let's talk about callouts, which happens to be tip number 20. In Valorant, people communicate with callouts. Essentially, these are nicknames for different areas of the map, so that you can most efficiently deliver information. For instance, if someone is playing in Heaven, it is much easier to say one Heaven rather than there's a player in the room above the site on the right side. Learning these calls for every map will not only help you understand your teammates better, but it will make you a better teammate as you can tell your team where enemies are without causing confusion. Don't be scared to turn on your mic and start calling things you see out. Even if you don't have a microphone, try to use the in-game text chat or even ping features to help deliver information to your team. Next up, we have a very simple tip we touched on some earlier. For tip number 21, we have walk, don't run. We already talked about just how important audio is in Valorant, but we didn't explain just how much footstep sounds affect gameplay. In Valorant, running is super loud. Try to walk as much as possible so you don't give away your position to the enemy team. On the flip side, you can exploit your enemies by listening for their footsteps, then predict the position that they will be in and pre-fire them for a free easy kill. At tip number 22, we have vary your gun usage. Almost every weapon in Valorant is useful, even the LMGs. So if you don't have enough credits for a Phantom or Vandal, buy something new, especially depending on what round it is. These cheap guns can do some major damage. For instance, the Ares is only 1600 credits, but can shred through entire teams in just one clip. Tip number 23 is a great way to improve a Valorant while you aren't even playing the game, and this is by watching high level Valorant gameplay and guides. Watching streams and videos that are made by people that are better than you is a great way to learn how to take your game to the next level. For tip number 24, we are going to talk about map awareness. Staying aware of what is going on on the other side of the map is very important. There's a lot of information that can be seen on your minimap to help you better understand what is going on during the game. The map shows all of your teammates' positions, what they're watching, where the spike is, and even when your teammates see an enemy. Keep checking the map regularly, especially when your team is not using voice comps. And on to our final tip, this might be one of the most important, and that is tip number 25, get creative with your playstyle, do the unexpected. In Valorant, predicting what the other team is going to do can be easy at times. Make sure you are doing things that the other team will not expect. For instance, let's say all game you've been smoking off this hallway and falling off. Well, instead of smoking and falling off, smoke it off and push through. Get creative with how you play and use your abilities to keep the enemy teams on their toes and hopefully start winning you more games. Wow, we just went over 25 tips and tricks that will help all of you win more games, get more kills, and be a better teammate. Which tip was the most helpful for you? Let us know in the comment section down below. Also, if you want to keep up with some of the best Valorant content on YouTube, be sure to hit that subscribe button, bell icon, and leave a like if you found this video helpful. Thank you for watching the Skillcap Guide, this has been Carnage, and I hope to see you in the next one.